Hey everyone, it's Craig. A lot of exciting things coming up in the next week or so, including DragCon LA. Katya and I will be doing our very first live episode of Whimsically Volatile on May 25th. That's a Saturday at 11 a.m. For tickets to the whole shebang, go to RuPaul'sDragCon.com and use promo code Whimsical for 10% off. And our brand new shirt featuring a fabulous design by Ali, which you may have seen on our Instagram, will be available immediately after the show. Come say hi at the booth. Cherry and Sophie will be there as well, and we can't wait to see you. In the meantime, head on over to patreon.com slash Katya and Craig, join Hot Dog Club, and give yourself the gift of entertainment. For $5 a month, you get our bonus episodes, which are full-length episodes in which we discuss really important matters of the day, like Thunderbuns and Guy Prude. For $7 a month, well, you get all of those bonus episodes, plus our listener questions episodes. As a member of this tier of Hot Dog Club, you can ask us anything you like, and we will give you a passionate, if not always coherent, answer. And for $10 a month, you get all the bonus episodes, all the listener questions episodes, and entry into Movie Club. Now, titles we've already discussed on Movie Club include Body Double, Suspiria, Steel Magnolias, Legend, Waiting for Guffman, featuring special guest Laganja Estranja, Scream, featuring special guest Trixie Mattel, who also did a very special episode on contact for john waters fans we did hairspray and we're doing one very soon on crybaby and most recently the rocky horror picture show with guests cherry torn and sophie monroe plus cherry's partner dozer who until the day we showed it to him had never seen the movie or heard of it get all of that and more at patreon.com slash katya and craig follow us on instagram and twitter at katya and craig and go to katya live or we love katya.com to find out where you can see katya on the next leg of the help me i'm dying tour now that we have that taken care of it's time to enjoy my chat with Ms. Cracker. A Russian ballerina stomping on a bureaucrat. A perky suburban housewife who just got into scat. Give it a beep, bop, 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 bow, bop, bop, bow. It's whimsically volatile. Hello. <laughs> oh, there we go. She's a woman. <laughs> You're listening to Whimsically Volatile. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all types around the world, on Whimsically Volatile today, we have a very special treat for you, because we're going to serve the saltines, we're going to put on the ritz, we're going to chat with Ms. Cracker. Yes, outside of your place, a woman screamed at me, everything sits on a ritz. I was like, (laughs) well, there you go, taken. True words never been spoken, right? Oh, it's very true. A lot of things have sat on me. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, cracker-related pun? My original name, Brianna Cracker. Like, uh-huh. that was my favorite. That's why I took the name. I don't think anyone has ever really made, like, shock me with one until everything sits on a Ritz, which, I, which is one that I hadn't heard. I don't oh, know if okay. that's an official <laughs> slogan of the Ritz, but... Uh, Maybe a new t-shirt or tote bag. I know. We're always looking for merch ideas. Yeah, exactly. Please help us. <laughs> so, uh, you're in town doing a bunch of stuff. Yes, I am. I'm doing everything that I possibly can because we decided today I'm what they call driven. Oh, okay. It's, um, yeah, you find you arrive at that. You're like, what's that thing? What's yeah. that thing that keep mo- I was like, what is that? This is like a, a haunted. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What it's called? Um, yeah. So we were in Chicago and we had this awkward amount of time um before our next la gig and we can't just sit there you can't what are you gonna do and sit and enjoy yourself or relax no, absolutely God, not what does that even mean what being does that a even person mean? of the jewish faith absolutely <laughs> not they didn't just sit in the desert for 40 years they wandered okay we almost got like weirdly political there for a second so we're gonna back away we're gonna away. pull that away maybe i'll cut it out maybe i'll cut it out. maybe there'll be a we bleep don't want and, uh... lana del rey to get triggered um <laughs> we anyway wouldn't want that, no. yeah so uh, that's actually what her entire career is but we're not gonna do it to her anymore so um yeah we're just like let's fill it with things and um we have not liked la in the past and then here we've started to sort of like secretly you fall in love with it Ooh, but now being new yorkers okay we can't say that so you have to edit that out of this we don't want okay. anyone to know maybe a bleep a bleep's good because right. it leaves it up to the imagination i'll just say not me but a friend of mine sure. saw the sunset on the palm trees okay and found them beautiful. Your friend might have been maybe a, moved to consider possibly one day maybe right. moving. But we don't talk anymore. So Oh, that's yeah, you cut the communication off because as a proud New Yorker, exactly. that's what you have to do. That's what you would do. Also with us is Caitlin. Uh, yes, Caitlin's here in the studio. She opted not to take a mic because she hates the sound of her own voice, which is why we're friends because we have that in common. <laughs> oh, so you yeah. uh, you as well hate the sound of your own voice. Of her voice. Oh, okay. Right, right. Well, look, you know, it, it's good to bond on something, right? <laughs> she can't say anything back because we took her mic away. That's right. Although, wait, I'll give you a quick hello to the to the listener. Say hello. 
Hello, listeners. <laughs> oh, my there goodness. There we go. There we go. She sounds sweet. Right. Well, she knows how to put it on for the first yeah, couple minutes, that's right? that's her drag voice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to know how to put it on for the first few minutes. Yeah. And how long are you in town for? Oh, you know what? Hang on a second. Take a break. Enjoy your Coca-Cola. Every oh. time I've, I've cut you off every time you've gone to enjoy a sip of the California <laughs> Raspberry Coca-Cola. It's not you that's cutting me off. It's my feverish desire to talk at all <laughs> times. I'm like, oh, I have something to say. Have you heard the latest bold mole from Miss Cracker? <laughs> and by yeah, the way, um, how's the temperature in here? Because I know you were in oh, full regalia perfect. today. So if you want the air on, let me Girl, know. Girl, I'm in geesh. I thought that I would diet by restricting my food intake and cutting my portions. But what I've found is, yeah. if I wear a corset all day, I'm always full. <laughs> See, you know? there you go. Which is why Violet Chachki has such a full life. You know what I mean? <laughs> but very driven as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the rain. <laughs> but yeah, we're here to tell... Um, I hope the audience enjoys the sound of like carbonated sugar water spilling down my deep throat. Well, without Brian here, there's no food sounds. So right. it's like nice to have that mixed in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, welcome to easy listening and ASMR with Miss Cracker. Ah, yes. Um, but yeah, we're here till um, Saturday morning and then we're going to San Francisco. Oh, great. Where we, I imagine we will wear a light sweater because <laughs> of the drizzle. Yeah. I was just in San Francisco for my first time, actually. And it was uh, your Ray, first time. My first time. How been, long have you been gay? Is it recent? <laughs> What's going on? Well, and I've only been in LA four and a half years, and um, more recently, more experimental. Right. Yeah. 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 Same. I've always thought of myself as a queer ally, but I've, you know, had lesbian tendencies recently. (laughs) No, but San Francisco is one of our big loves. We really like San Francisco because it's got the hills and the sunset and the the water, the bridge, the parks. Sure. And, um, and you can feel the history done in the Castro. It was only there for, you can feel something. (laughs) You can feel a lot of things, you know, a lot of, feel a lot of different things. I heard something about the tenderloin, what you could feel there, but Uh, again, it wasn't that trip. Uh, I think what you can feel there is the love tonight. Oh, sure. sure. Um, so yeah, San Francisco, we never thought that, uh, you could beat it. And so we're really excited to go and see if we, uh, you know, are feeling like Californians. I feel like we're feeling more and more like I Dublin. think you and your friend, especially. Or one of my former friends did. Yeah, anyway. well, your former associate, I think, is really feeling yeah. it. And look, you're just encouraging you want them to do well. You want them That's to, right. you know, live their full fantasy. Go in their own path. Yes, exactly. You can't beat the weather, as everyone always says. I'm actually going to New York next week. My first solo trip there. Yeah. I'd only been in couples prior to that. Going oh, there. really? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to like Your first solo time. trip in New York. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to think of what you have to do. I would love to know. I would love to know. That you that you have to do on your own. Um, yeah, like uh, feel lost in a pile of wrecked dreams. That's something you can only do while you're alone in oh, New York. Good. I did okay. that for 10 years. Oh, did you? Yeah. 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 Um, but you felt in... alone. So there wasn't even a kinship. Oh, the absolutely. Dreams. No, that's yeah. great. That's one of the great things about New York. Actually, I think that you can't find anywhere else in America. There's 8 million people there, but still you have a nice <laughs> fortress of loneliness. Even though the you. apartments, are, you know, can be small. You At can have time. your own yeah. little space yeah. to have just the sadness and the loneliness. It's not a small apartment. Think of it as like a housing hug. You oh, know what I mean? that's very It's not the walls good. closing in on you. It's a real estate embrace. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. You know, you always got to rebrand in your mind. Oh, absolutely. And for the world. Yeah. Do you know what I would do? I would do what New Yorkers don't do, which is actually take some money and go and visit the museums yeah. and do it this way. Walk through at a nice pace and don't stop until you see something that grabs you. Yeah. And I think when people go to the museums in New York, um, they're like, well, I've paid the admission fee. So I have to act like I like every piece of art. And as uh-huh. human beings, we don't no, it's give true. yourself permission to be like, I don't get that yet. Yeah. This is not for me. What yeah. were they thinking? Oh, yeah. that guy conned somebody. Right. Oh, <laughs> and he did. <laughs> he absolutely did. So yeah. just, uh, just like breeze through and something is going to grab you and then spend 15 minutes on that and then hit it. Yeah. Um, and then find some fun bars. And then find some fun bars. What are your favorite fun bars in New York? Oh, you know, I am like in my spirit married to Barracuda uh-huh. because it's, first of all, one of the places that gave me my first uh, big drag gigs. Okay, yeah. Um, but also because it's sort of where New York drag, it was like a crucible for that. Yeah. Like Candace Kane, sure. Jackie B, yeah. me, no, uh, <laughs> Roberta Elaine, the drag queen, Bob the drag queen. Yeah. Like everyone sort of got their start there. Yeah. And it was because the guy who owns it 
he had this idea that you could have drag every night of the week oh, right, and yeah. on the weekends. And before it had been a once in a while thing aside. Yeah. And he was like, no, you can have a bar that's centered on it yeah. and it can thrive and survive. And that became the template for all of the bars. He had a bar crowbar before that. Okay. And yeah. those bars sort of together, um, made drag what it is in new york sure in a big way so that place it's dark <laughs> it's perfect there's a little bench by a mirror and if at the end of the night you don't have somebody yeah sit on that bench <laughs> and some person will take you that's nice it's yeah. very nice it will also that there's a mirror there so they can check the reflection yeah and then see what the offering right. is on the bench yeah. exactly they can look at themselves and be like <sighs> <laughs> this is where we are now. I remember the first time I went to the cock. That was quite an immersive experience. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> like five senses reeling. Oh, yes, it certainly it's is. Yeah. Really. Oh, uh, well, love... you know, like those Halloween houses where you go and there's like <laughs> this, yeah. a different scene going on oh, in every sure. room. And hands and in the hallway. Like, I, yeah. There's hands in the hallway. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and it is like really good to know. It's like the dustbin of uh -huh. gay bars. You can see all of the things that have been in other gay bars sort of swept into a pile. Okay, sure. In so, one you, spot. so like the best of the of the refuse. The best, the best of the, the refuse. refuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was on a banner. I thought I saw outside. So right. I the thought best it was for of the, the restaurant. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was they got rated best of the refuse. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So I the the cock is an experience, and I think um like we should go because uh, I think it's like changing and it's getting a little more classy and uh -huh. let's catch it oh you yeah. should catch it before it just oh it goes fully before they like yeah. mop and stuff and you know <laughs> when you can't get pickpocketed at the, the right. inside yeah. yeah that's one of my favorite things uh, entering the place there was a guy going in that was refusing to listen to the woman at the door about putting her their wallet in the front pocket yeah so she pickpocketed him to display <laughs> work how easy it was oh. and then she was like see where's your wallet you don't yeah. have it here it is do what i say no <laughs> exactly that's a very new yorker thing that's a very new yorker thing is to either take someone's wallet or phone or tell them like guess what i would have your phone right now because it's right there <laughs> exactly. and you're always like weirdly thank you now before new york you grew up where i grew up in seattle when did you move to new york i moved to new york in 2006 so that's 13 years ago or something 13 14 something years like ago. that we'll yeah. look that up later we'll have the staff yeah. check that into fact that. checkers yeah yeah and then i'll dub in that yeah. proper answer later 13 yeah <laughs> i moved there 13 i loved it <laughs> <laughs> and you first started performing at barracuda uh, what year i started performing at a place called excess lounge which doesn't oh, exist you know, anymore that's right. and i heard that in an interview promptly forgot yeah, yeah. It's the, but it's like uh that's where Bob was. And then Bob moved up to Barracuda. And then I started sort of guesting sure. with her. But, you know, I was, it was, it was like at the same time, Barracuda yeah. too. You know what, sorry, there is a terrible noise going on. Let me just close the window. I, I told I you Caitlin's closed. voice is just <laughs> I was much. trying to cover for her and like you blew it, but like you're going to, yeah. you're the one who has to leave with her. So you you're deal welcome. with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Barracuda um, yeah. had uh, a bunch of competitions for baby queens. And so yeah. what we would do is, uh, Thank you for your like your verbal prompts like mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I know you'd be really good in a relationship because that is people are like, what's the secret to a good relationship or a good friendship? It's uh mm-hmm noises every once in a while. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's just true. And I, I actually yeah. mean them too. It sounds uh yeah. markedly mm -hmm. disingenuous when mm -hmm. I describe my mm -hmm. interest in yeah. someone. But mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. yeah, see mm -hmm. there you go. See, mm -hmm. I think yeah, oh! we have, we've got a good mm -hmm. thing going here. Yeah. We do. Right. Yeah. So anyway, you were saying about performing at Excess. See, I'm retaining the memory. Oh, I can, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can repeat the last few words. That's, That's also key, key to a good yeah, friendship yeah. or relationship. Yeah. So uh, they had drag competitions uh, run by everyone from uh, like Peppermint oh, yeah. to Mimi, I'm first. Uh -huh. um, that's like, a, imagine the full spectrum <laughs> between those two. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was like that birthplace for me and for Bob. Now, um, on the show, someone makes a gag about you and Bob having a little bit of a relationship that maybe was at the beginning of your drag career. Like, that was the intention of it, because I was, like, going home in the snow, and I saw someone struggling with a bookshelf in the snow, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, A, I can be a good Samaritan, and B, hello, Dick is the solution to my emptiness and problems. <laughs> <laughs> so, so look, um, through helping others, right? They say through right. service, yeah. you are rewarded. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. And tis more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> so we're learning a lot about preferences now. Right. Um, so 
anyway, so I, that was the intention. But then when I got to his place and we carried this like vintage Ikea bookshelf upstairs. Oh, yes. Um, I saw all these wigs around and at that time I had never been exposed to drag queens at all. And I sort of like, um, you're shaking, Seas you're visibly shook shaking. Yeah, backwards yeah. out the door, <laughs> like one of those wind up um, oh, yeah. monkeys, just like slam. And uh, but by that time, it was too late. He already had my number, oh, and we were go. neighbors. So he was like, Hey, you know, I'm gonna go do drag uh, down in Times Square, and I'd be like, I've said gay, no, which is yes later. Um, <laughs> and uh, he just kept asking and finally I had to make good on it. And that's how I ended up doing drag. I was nagged into Uh doing drag. Okay. And this is what happened as a result. Well, nagged into drag again, these little catchphrases, these slogans, these, I'm getting that. Ooh, ah, sensation. Nagged into drag. Ooh, ah, ah, sensation. (laughs) Um, I always tell Caitlin that if I wrote about, um, my friendship with her i would call it uh nag me to stardom (laughs) because she's the first face that i see when i wake up in the morning she's like cracker Mm -hmm. time to make hair (laughs) i'm like and that's how she got me to get good good at drag (laughs) and so how long you've known each other since when since around that time or earlier than that three and a half years almost four where did you meet um, we met, this is a good one, and we haven't told this story in a while. Monet Exchange and I were on the street, uh, Monet exchanging some stories, and... Uh, you got a lot of happenings on the street, by the way. So oh, I'm really yeah, taken with because, this. because yeah. uh, interiors in New York are small, so it but all happens on go. the street. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Caitlin came up to us and was like, Hey, um, do you guys know where Bob the Drag Queen is performing? Yeah, and this is right, before right. Bob was on Drag Race, <laughs> and I was like, oh, so people just walk around New York City looking for Bob the Drag Queen. Huh? Don't ask about our show. We don't matter. And she was like, oh, what are your guys' names? Monet was like, hey, girl, I'm Monet, blah, 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 like the Monet congeniality way. And I was like, yeah. oh, don't ask me. I'm just nobody. It's a black hole. It's a mystery. Who knows? You know? And... uh uh, Caitlin was in her mind was like, what a fucking bitch. And I was like, this basic ass white girl. And that's, you know, how we became friends. That's a lovely, lovely And you know what? Meeting. We haven't lost that. Yo, it's still there. I <laughs> can feel it. I can feel, I can feel the love tonight, She's by still, the way. We're still irritated by each other. <laughs> that's every good. Day. And you can also have a follow-up book, Nag Me to Hell. Yeah. Which <laughs> Nag be, Me yeah. to <laughs> Hell, which is her book about me. Oh, there you go. Um, so yeah, that's how we met. Like, it's just accidental stuff, which is what's great about new york which is like it's the density that causes uh-huh. it sure yeah and what part of new york do you live in she lives in the heights and i live in harlem or harlem heights oh, as i accidentally right. said right. one yeah. time uh-huh. um and the thing is like uh caitlin is like the drag whisperer she can like point to somebody and be like they're gonna go to drag race someday oh, and wow. they're gonna okay. do well yeah and she was a big fan of bianca before she went to drag race yeah and a big fan of bob and people would look at these comedy queens and be like, yeah, um, I'm going to go see so-and-so because I don't see it for them. Uh-huh. And then Caitlin's like, well, now what? <laughs> a few days later. And like, it continues. Like, all, we keep seeing people that Caitlin has pointed to. Like, so I was like, maybe I should listen to her. Yeah. Maybe just on finally, some things, finally you know? listen to one or two things. Yeah. You said earlier your exposure to drag and drag queens was rather limited. And on the show you talked about growing up, your exposure to pop culture was rather limited. So I want to go back to that era and just get a sense of... I had no idea who Mariah Carey was wow. at all. No, I, um, <laughs> it, was, it was super limited. And I think it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my parents saying like, no pop culture it's the devil it wasn't like the village like m night Shyamalan <laughs> or something it was just like we were doing other things and yeah. that we didn't have room for people magazine or television i was we had one hour of television and what was that usually consisting of like x-files you brought up gillian anderson in, uh, always uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I stand my redheads. Did uh, you like the comeback series that they had? The no, new run? That was oh, that's a shame. Horrible. Mm-hmm. The best thing that came out of that was I saw it super early and I was able to warn my fellow X Files. We Good. call each other. Did you get to watch it all at once too? We could not have to wait week to week to. It was suffer? like Pandora's box in a certain <laughs> way because I like. Why are you bringing her into this? Started with yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was like Pandora's box in a way, in that it was unemployed. No, it was um, it was like Pandora's box. Like as soon as like I peeked the demons coming out, I was like, no, I'm not even gonna wait for hope to come out. I'm just gonna slam the lid. Yeah, I just saw a half an episode, <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> in one of the scenes Jillian Anderson is doing like uh, brain surgery you know with like these m- tiny little instruments because yeah. now she's a brain surgeon of course you know in a, in um, it's called off. character development exactly and she comes into like the scrub room to look at some files and she is like covered with blood it's like all over her face it's like a, a like dexter or something dexter, yeah. yeah and i was like what happened and the whole show is like they're just like over the top but dead serious yeah but just at this side of camp so that it's uncomfortable oh right when it's not quite um, enough it's uh, yeah yeah and yeah. uh my new book this side of camp yeah, yeah uh yeah it's coming out soon um i pre-ordered it yeah it's gonna be great mm-hmm. and uh miranda Priestley already has the advanced copy as well oh terrific yeah i was like gonna say what were we talking about oh uh, we were talking about your exposure to pop culture oh, and your yeah. household when you were growing up my mother and father were readers okay and my mom is an artist and she was like the best way to learn about the world is hands-on sure making things we would go to a museum and look at all the art pieces that we liked and she'd say all right pick your favorite thing and we're going to go home and we're going to make it out of trash that's how she wanted us to learn about the world and not through uh television because it was passive she wanted everything okay, to be sure. active which is why to this day you know i'm still a top activo <laughs> um it's better to give than receive right right this is what you were saying earlier yeah it says that <laughs> um so yeah that's that's what she wanted and it, it was a positive thing go towards this go towards yeah. the tactile go Make towards things. En- engage yeah. it wasn't a no 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 you no gotcha. no right. tv like it wasn't that because i think that kind of negative mindset you come out of that wanting your is it called a room springer what's that where you like you just go nuts oh, on yeah. it if if they yeah. if people tell you no 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 That's at some you point want. you're gonna want that yeah and they never told me no um so i just had this good feeling towards other things and so i never had that period where i was like addicted uh to television i always just was like drawn to making things so when you first started discovering pop music who were you drawn to and how did you discover it it was like the weirdest spectrum i went to tower records Uh uh-huh i believe and got a christina aguilera album because i had heard that on the radio okay in gym class and uh then boys for pele by tori amos because my cousin and my queer cousin gave it to me Uh and those are that's like became the two cracker paths like one i am like deathly addicted to um, junk pop sure it's and great. then yeah. i'm also interested in like lilith Farian, angry female arty shit yeah yeah, yeah. 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 just yeah. like um joanna newsome uh amy winehouse sure. tori amos yeah. uh nico case mm-hmm. amy man amy man oh amy man absolute fucking we were just listening to amy man which album so that's one side oh um Actually, sadly, I have to say that I was introduced to her through Magnolia. Well, listen, I, that's when I got obsessed with her. I'm from yeah. the Boston area, so yeah. I was always aware of her because, you know, bands like Aerosmith or Till Tuesday, you, uh, as a kid, I knew like, okay, they're from yeah. around here. This is great. Right. And then I, when I saw Magnolia, I freaked out. It's one of the best movies ever made. Right? Oh, it's amazing. And I keep telling Caitlin that we're going to watch it. But like, at what time... Before a gig or after a gig, Ooh. is it right to watch a three-hour <laughs> film about six unrelated people yeah. in L.A. Okay, dealing with death? Sure. You know, they're playing it when I'm out of town as a matinee at the New Beverly Theater, which is my God, favorite theater. It's uh, and maybe it tonight's be... the night. We have a chunk of time. Uh-huh. A chunk! <laughs> and I... I and there's so many things that I say all the time that are from that. We're back and ready for round oh two. Oh my God. Right? I love that. I love that. But I haven't seen it in forever. I can't wait to see it again. And, and, and this, wait, where's, do you have ice cubes? Do we have any ice oh, cubes let me get anywhere? Some, I'll get some ice cubes. It's just like, just like the, the, you should know better. <laughs> With the clink. You clink. should know better. <laughs> that like Miss Piggy Goldie Hawn actress. I can't remember who oh, she really oh was. Oh God. But um, just, yes. Yeah. It's incredible. Oh, and the cast is wild. Phil, Philip Baker Hall, Phillips. Tom Cruise Hoffman. as yeah. uh, what's his oh, name? Uh, himself. Mackie something. Mackie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, oh, as, him, as himself. Yes. <laughs> that man. 
<laughs> Julianne Moore, you suck my dick. That's what drugs do. You people. There's no death in my house. You have to be in my house, that man. Like, the key to Julianne Moore crying, just so you know, mm-hmm. is to uh, put your teeth together, lips apart. <laughs> Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. I see what you, exactly what you're saying. Divine. That is, now, she. It's, it's like great. she was in the room. And um, are you and also a fan of Boogie Nights? I just happened to watch that it. again recently. Yeah, and Julie love Moore, it. Un- incredible yeah. on that as well. There are so many situations in life where I'm like, this is a Boogie Night situation. <laughs> I'm watching a group of sex idiots dissolve into nothing before my eyes. <laughs> it's part of my career observing that. I'm like the Jane Goodall of that. I watch that professionally um but what i was gonna say is oh quick thing about julianne moore yeah watch your favorite julianne moore movie and look at her hands tiny hands she has tiny hands she, the, the call will come in she's like playing she's doing uh what is it hannibal okay and yeah. she's like hello <laughs> and you just like, it's like this a, little raccoon hand it's like a <laughs> just, tiny little katya just, plastic hand exactly on the phone. a little yeah. snl yeah. uh <laughs> Kristen Wig. yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious oh, God. Uh, the tiny hands of julianne moore tonight at nine yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so with pop music the you, eyes of tammy faye the, oh, and, and the, the hands, tiny hands yeah. of julianne moore <laughs> world of wonder get on that because they did a fabulous job with the eyes of tammy faye oh I, absolutely yeah, i love that yeah she did a fabulous job with her eyes too you no know, she did so with the pop music you were in the a's and you hadn't even gotten to the b's yet you had tori amos christina aguilera annie lennox oh yeah mix. there you go uh, Joan Baez and Bob Dylan, that was from my mom's side. You know, it's funny, my folks were massive fans of Baez and Dylan as well. So I, uh, as a little kid, because they, they were obsessed with music. So yeah. I I was right in there listening to all those records. And then my folks saw Joan Baez on like a dirt floor basement in Cambridge before she had a record deal. I love Joan Baez because th- for the same reason I like Amy Winehouse, it's like thinly veiled stories about her life oh yeah she's like here's a song about someone who has a roommate by this name meanwhile she's living with the roommate by that name she's like (laughs) you're a piece of shit you know and uh joan baez is like this is a song about not billing and we have an illegitimate child i mean we don't but the person in the song does here we go i'm gonna kick you in the ass bob dylan Uh, (laughs) and you're like oh i need more of this this is the original bad girls club diamonds and rust diamonds and rust is amazing great judas Um, priest cover of that too Oh, really? Oh, yeah, it's fabulous. Oh, no, yeah. I did. I was YouTubing that video for myself to get myself in the mood for self harm. And I. Uh, <laughs> what could be better like, than that? Exactly. Right? It's a quick and trip. Yeah. I, I, that's what I went on, uh, got to first. I was like, oh, this is a great cover. But uh, Joan Baez is touring right now. Oh, really? Wow. And I kind of like want to go you and should. drag and take my mom. You absolutely drag should. Drag my mom. Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like we listened to those vinyls. On yeah. repeat, I just want to say the two words Mason Jennings also, because if you are aroused by any of the other things I said, you're going to like the early stuff of Mason Jennings. I think we're all aroused by the things you were saying, right? You're welcome. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. Before he uh, went to rehab. Oh, and then at post rehab. Got married and had twins and had a beautiful, happy, fulfilled uh, balanced life. That's and very his sad. music was just ruined. <laughs> um, I'm talking about the person that lived in a basement in Duluth waiting for that bottle of gin to take him out, you know, <laughs> for dinner. Now, pardon me. I'm, I'm not just checking my phone. I'm checking my notes Can because I my, okay. I, would you like enjoy your Coca-Cola? I am. Yes, please. Mm. <laughs> this delicious and refreshing Coca-Cola <laughs> beverage is infused with California raspberry locally sourced all natural flavors yeah that's right 100 percent real petroleum byproducts hey have you visited the world wide web oh it's such an exciting place and now you can have your own website and it's so easy to do with wix have you wanted to make your own website but maybe been held back by not knowing coding or just been a little intimidated by the process well your troubles are over now because wix.com is the solution Over 140 million people already use Wix for their websites. You can start and publish for free. Choose from over 500 stunning templates or start from scratch. Change, customize, add anything you want. Text, images, videos, you know, all the stuff that you see on a website. And all the sites include built-in SEO tools. That's search engine optimization, which is very helpful when you're trying to be found on the great old World Wide Web. Get the tools you need to create the website you want. Unlimited storage, a custom domain, email addresses for your business, email marketing tools, premium apps, dedicated support teams, and so much more. 
We would have liked to have had a whimsically volatile website up already. The thing is, we were kind of uh, a little intimidated. Maybe we didn't know how to go about it, or we were a little too busy taping uh, gross things on the couch. But now our website's in process because we're using Wix. And there's tools for every business, e-commerce, music, hotels, events, restaurants, and more. Or if you just want to put up your own personal blog, Wix can make a beautiful presentation for you. You get unlimited fonts, design effects, HD video, grids, and layouts, code capabilities, media galleries, and basically everything you need to make a fabulous website. So get started now by going to Wix.com. That's W-I-X.com slash podcast to get 10% off. That's Wix.com slash podcast. I want to go back to some moments from season 10. Work. In Untucked after the pickle party, you said that uh, you had no right to suck the energy out of the room by walking around with a low face. And then you added that you do that because you doubt yourself and don't love yourself. And what I want to know is where are you at with all of that? Well, um... I think doubt is like a huge part of my family, also Jewish culture, Mm -hmm. skepticism. It has, being an atheist, it has like good sides too. Yeah. Um, But you can take it to too far of a level. Mm -hmm. And I think right now is when I'm in the midst of grappling with that really i sort of pussy fuss, put it pussy pussy fussing pussy. It's a oh whole my new god thing. can i not speak anymore am i not good enough for this <laughs> interview should i even talk uh no uh i think like i did the show and then promoting the show and then i was watching the show and then i was touring and i never had a, a moment to grapple with myself really yeah and i think finally in the last month or so i really sat down and been like okay How are we going to get stuff in balance? And that's sort of where my one woman show came out of is just me centering myself and being like, all right, how am I going to get rid of my anxiety? And I think it's by making things and I will doubt myself less and love myself more if I'm doing the things that I think I should be doing. Okay. So I like pulled back a little bit from the one number a night gigs yeah. and sort of push this project that was important to me forward. And that has meant that when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I'm doing something important mm-hmm. instead of being like, I'm just doing a bunch of stuff. What's wrong with me? Does that make sure, sense? It makes a lot of sense. It's actually yeah. very in line with Brian's trajectory as well. You know? When, yeah. yeah. And I love the name of the show. Oh, I thank so, you. So yeah. Um, I thought you meant was like volatile. You're talking about his show. Yeah. Oh, great. Their show. <laughs> no. Yeah. All of it's those a fabulous. Voices. It's a, yes, exactly. It's a fabulous title. It's a wonderful show too. Did you get a chance to see it? I haven't or seen it yet. Because you've been traveling yeah. so much. Yeah. But I've had a phone conversation oh with katya so katya described the entire uh, <laughs> no i'm just like and... know how her train of thought works so oh, yeah. i really want to see the show um yeah i think i'm sure she feels the same way that if you are just hunkered down in exactly what you want to do your mind doesn't spin out as much anymore that's right and you're constantly applying yourself to something yeah. that is a long-term goal and not yeah. just making yourself busy and you know what i I I feel like I misspoke in that episode a little bit because I said, I don't love myself. I would adjust it a little bit to say, I'm not loving to myself. They're Um, good. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Because I love myself a lot. Yeah, you seem like you do. I put a lot of work into what I do. I have a lot of pride in myself and I care for myself a lot, but I don't treat myself with in a loving manner. Sure. I'm very abusive towards myself and I need to take the advice that my mom gave me Mm -hmm. when I was going through my high school angst, which was when you say something to yourself, imagine yourself saying it to someone you love. For me, my sister, like if I'm like, you are not going to make it because for a mysterious reason, you just are not as good as other people. And that will always be part of who you are your whole life. Would I say that to my sister? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Never. So why would I say that to myself? Right, exactly. And so like it just requires that little test and then throw things out. That's a great test and also um, if you think about how people treat you, if someone's like maybe pushing the boundaries on what is okay and not okay. Would you allow that person to do that yeah, exactly. to your sister? And, and and would you do that? No. You no. know what I mean exactly? Yeah. Treat yourself in a loving manner. And it's easy to misspeak or not speak exactly how you want in that kind of pressure. Right. But yeah, no, I, I think we can all, though, work on loving ourselves. Oh, certainly. Yeah, so it's, st- it's still something that I worked on, but I, that, it's the attitude that comes first 
speaking to yourself in a kind way and treating yourself kind and that helps you develop a better love for yourself I yeah think, and that spreads into every aspect of uh life relationships i mean it's like rupaul says yeah you can't love yourself yeah etc and i would even take it further if you are a flaming shit wreck <laughs> then you can't do anything you right, know right so, except maybe you know cause some collateral damage in other people's lives oh, <laughs> you noticed <laughs> <laughs> listen i'm a fan of your work thank you know you. what do you want me to say thank you i'm an yeah, admirer my mother cried for hours <laughs> Uh, and that leads me to the evil twin challenge mm. where, you know, the other queens indicated that maybe you don't share your emotions as much. Yeah. And in the interview post that, the yeah. confessional, you felt that, well, maybe you're feeling everything a little bit more intensely than others or uh -huh. to a very high level. It's like, uh, like a, I think of it as like a circuit breaker. Yeah. You know, it's sure. like there's the light bulbs in the house are out and you're like, well, there's no electricity in the house. It's actually not what happened. What happened is there was a huge surge <laughs> and it blew everything out. And I think yeah. that's what happens to me is like, I feel emotions and I express them up to a certain point and then there's like a surge and I'm like, yeah, for those at home, yeah. my head was lolling to the side with my <laughs> tongue out. That's, uh, I guess that's what happens. And I guess <laughs> you have to learn how to, I need a surge breaker. Yeah. I need a way to, when I have emotions, like go with them a little bit more so they don't burn out all my circuitry. Totally. Maybe have a light brown out instead of a full blackout. A light brown out. Yeah. Uh, which is great <laughs> in the context of this gay podcast. <laughs> gay on my side of the sofa, anyway. Well, no, you know, actually, it was kind of interesting because, uh, you know, I was just strictly with women for a long time and then yeah. in recent times, not so. Yeah. So, and it's been great. Yeah. But so this is the first discussion I'm having about it, actually, on. On do microphone. You, why do you think that happened? That's a good question. Well, I was with someone for almost 14 years. And then you were like, anything but that. <laughs> like, yeah, literally. Yeah, so it's not so much. I'm like, hey, what's a, what's a, who's next door? You yeah. Know, what's down the street? Yeah. I don't know. I guess it's just something that, because also I had um, weight issues a lot of my life. So right. I don't know. Maybe there was a lot of like sort of hiding. And I never really thought about it much i just sort of thought like oh i'm just interested in a lot of similar things yeah in gay culture you yeah. know what i mean and then like the sort of kinship my people etc mm -hmm. because maybe a feeling like an outsider for a lot of other reasons yeah and um but then just one day someone was sort of like hitting on me and i was like well let's try this and, right and i was into it and um, but i'm still into everything else i was into as right. well so also it helps to be i guess my age i'm 43 yeah and also going through a long relationship and everything and then realizing i'm just going to try th things and see what i like yeah so it's kind of like funny when you look at young people from the, like the 20s younger than that the way they think about sexuality that generation they so so many of them do not give a shit at all oh yeah and they think yeah when i started seeing that um i was like oh wow so this thing that I've been trying to grapple with for so long and try to stake a claim, try to stake a territory for myself in all these spectrums. Yeah. Literally nobody is even thinking about it anymore. <laughs> like for that generation, they're like, listen, no matter who you are, as long as you are shaming people to suicide on Snapchat, <laughs> right. you know, then it's you're fine. Doing you're work. doing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're just, yeah. Like, just like, so it's like, um, yeah, I, I've seen that a lot more and um, you just learn to let go a little bit more true and also yeah. because it was the situation where i was the straight guy who just hung out with almost exclusively gays and women yeah that, that was like well i guess that's who i am so like even if you had thoughts passing things or someone like is flirting with you and you're like oh yeah but they i'm not that yeah so i don't you know and also being in a relationship with someone i was just in a relationship so right. yeah so lots of new things this year. which renders you genderless yeah <laughs> true um yeah. yeah so it's like uh I wonder, did people make fun of you for being around gay people all the time? Like, oh, well, I guess we know your story around gay guys all the time. Uh, well, <laughs> we get it. Just give it a little time. Did that happen a there lot? There was that sometimes. And then uh, someone who I told sort of the changes after that was like, but you were always around like that and you just now? And I was like, yeah. I don't know, like coming to things in my own time. And also I wanted to be like, hey, don't you know that that's like exactly what you're not supposed to say to someone? Right. You sort of like put away things. And also, again, being heavy when you're young that yeah. definitely just like impacts you severely so right. i didn't even have like a long-term girlfriend until much much later mm -hmm. in life right and you know and so a lot of that stuff there was a lot of um not uh i guess anxiety and, and unknowing around a lot a lot yeah. of all of it yeah yeah it's amazing what um 
any kind of shame can do to your entire personality oh it's a hell of a drug yeah shame. it's yeah. amazing like if they shame just your body they can get to your entire spirit yes they can which is wonderful yes they can which is why i'm here promoting my new brand of shaming no <laughs> i think i think it's so um important what we're learning right now about <laughs> young people not approaching them with any kind of shaming at all yeah because we are now thinking more about how it sticks forever mm -hmm. if they have a chance to <laughs> survive it. Yes, you know? right. Especially with it in the printed word, with yeah. it online, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. You know, some people blanch at the no bullying. Please enjoy your Coca-Cola. Uh, at the uh, no <laughs> uh, at the no bullying um, efforts. But really, you know what? It, let it go too far with that. That's fine. Because yeah. that stuff is terrible. And it right. you know, creates... I guess cancer in people. R really? Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah. So this is quite uh, a, a, a actually a big day for me then. Thank yeah. you, Cracker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that um, the only thing that I've learned is that the more confused you are, yeah, the closer you are to understanding how the world works. If that makes sense. That does make sense, actually, because it, well, it makes me think of, I want you to get back to what you're going to say, yeah. but it makes me think of how, you know, how people say like, you know, you're, you're terrified of maybe what people think of you in a situation if you right. have social anxiety. Oh, yeah. And then you realize that everyone else to some degree has that same kind yeah. of worry about how they're being perceived. So really no one's thinking about you. Yeah. But it's kind of like that. So go on to what you were saying. Yeah, no, it, that, that's a really, really good point. That's something I've been thinking about recently. Um, the more you try to know. Yeah. Uh, things the more uncomfortable you will get because I, I can't remember where I heard this fresh air NPR um, <laughs> that that's what I'm listening to right now actually yeah our mind grips onto things that are vivid yeah and negative because it's our mind is built to grapple with things that might um, harm us and that we might have sure. to deal with later yeah so you're like listen I'm just gonna be realistic I'm gonna stick with the thoughts that seem most realistic that's what you're saying to yourself but what your mind is doing is going great so I'm just gonna filter out the most vividly horrible things yes that I can imagine and call those real yeah and so you're like you look at all the people in the room and you're like they are all after me the world is after me and blah, blah, blah. This is going to happen. And your mind is like, exactly, exactly, exactly. Meanwhile, you are the same idiot you were five minutes ago. You have no idea <laughs> what other people are thinking. That's Do you right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just like walk into a room and allow yourself to be like, I have no idea what's going on in here. None. And everything that they're going through has nothing to do with me. Yeah. RuPaul's quote is like, uh, it's none of my business what other people think of me, I think. or Yeah. I, and I think... I think what she's trying to express there is that you can't change what other right. people think about you. But I think it's important to remember that sometimes what people think about you causes them to uh, attack you and to affect you. And so it is a little bit of your business, too. Well, that's And I don't true. think she's excluding that. Yeah. But I think what she's really saying is just like, don't try to control it. No, that's um, right. That's another thing. Control, which is something that you talk about struggling with yeah. on the show, yeah. right? And I'm sure it's a continual thing. You know, yeah. we all have that right. from time to time. I mean, look at my hair. I have control issues. <laughs> I made this at 11 o'clock at night over a period of three hours, like hair by hair. And it's because this is something I control. Um, but yeah, Caitlin and I were talking today about, you know, you tell yourself something like what other people think about me is none of my business mm -hmm. and then your feelings are still hurt by stuff. Well, that's or true. Yeah. When someone compliments you, some random person, your ego goes up, you know, that's equally, you know, a weird thing. <laughs> you know, do you allow that too? So you need to like try to not be affected by other people, but you also need to not punish yourself. That's true. For yeah. being affected by what other people think. That's and, a really uh, key thing. I think a lot of life is, is managing self punishment and right. trying to avoid it. You can't be like, you can't walk into a room and someone says, oh, really that dress? And you're like, uh, oh, I just let myself be affected by that bad. God damn it. What's wrong bad, with me? I can't. Bad dress. I, yeah. <laughs> bad character. Even worse than that. How did I let that in? How yeah, did I let that exactly. in? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and now I'm beating myself up. Look at me. <laughs> I'm the kind of person that beats themselves up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's like whew. Mm -hmm. a spiral yeah which we all love at a party yeah and this is what makes you a creative person i think <laughs> well you know the thing you said before about working on stuff to sort of 
assuage those anxieties or yeah. whatever. Needlework. Yeah. yeah, needlework. Yeah. Did you ever see All That Jazz, the Bob Fosse movie? <laughs> No, you I might like yet. it. I okay. think it's, it's about. I mean, Bob Fosse himself was, you know, a workaholic yeah. and a, a genius and yeah. everything. And thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. And um, didn't quite have the wig skills that you have, though. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think you, you would enjoy it. It's one of Laganja's favorites as well. Oh, Fosse work. as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not just this raspberry. No, no, the, no that's which all, is delicious yeah. and refreshing. Isn't it nice? Mm-hmm. Natural flavors. Absolutely. And, mm-hmm. and a glass bottle too. Yeah, just like the old days. <laughs> Um, Make America great flavored again. <laughs> the other thing I've noticed is that I feel a lot more just fully myself, even just with no one else knowing whatever, right. like going and hanging out. Like I was at the Abbey with friends last night. And it was yeah. fun just flirting with anyone that came up, yeah. you know, and not being like sort yeah. of held back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you stop thinking about what... <sighs> You you're trying to be uh, yeah. Are, yeah. then you just realize that you are like any other human being who likes attention <laughs> exactly yeah. that's really what it's about it's yep. attention yeah we like to yeah. be like oh i am a visible thing that exists <laughs> thank you yes exactly and i'll take this space thank and you, you for can... elbowing me out of the way at mickey's <laughs> i i feel like i'm a person mm-hmm, now mm-hmm. elbows at mickey's yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> what's your favorite bar around here when you're in, in town my favorite bar around here uh well we've had we had a really good time at mickey's and uh-huh. i think it's because once you walk out on that catwalk which i believe is uh what was it 14 apple crates pushed together oh yeah good um you are like oh uh, here i am part of history and this is going to be part of you know youtube so (laughs) you just like that that's a great feeling i I think i think we love that oh sure yeah yeah and just the press of people Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. feels like a moment and how do you like being uh recognized out and about uh it's harder when i'm out of drag and exhausted but when I am in face, you may know we have a landmark series that we do um, where we, uh, Caitlin takes uh, portraits of me in front of important landmarks mm-hmm. all over the world. Yeah. I'm in drag at 10 a.m. all over the world walking around because we love being able to see people. And also, like everyone that wants to see me, I love the smiles and like leaning out of the cars like, hey, anything sits on a ritz or whatever she said. <laughs> but we also love... This happened, I can't remember, in St. Louis. It was a Mardi Gras weekend. A lot of families were staying at the hotel where we were. And we came out of the hotel and a bunch of family were coming towards us. And mothers were grabbing their children by the face (laughs) to push them (laughs) out of the way. It was like uh, Medea, the Greek tragedy. They're like, better my children should die (laughs) than have this shame visited upon them. And I was like, I love that. And that's not malicious. That's just me being myself and, you know. Yeah. And Inspiring that's reactions, yeah, you know, that's exactly. right. Just a nice Queens wave as people are like, <laughs> people just like shake. They don't know, do I go left or right? How do I, mm. especially people who are borderline allies who are like walking towards me and then they want to go around me and they're like, wait, is it homophobic to avoid her? They're like, no, it's an object. I would walk around it anyway. It's neutral. I'm not homophobic. Yeah. Well, like, am I fetishizing her? Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's like, I, I'm not attracted to it. I mean, but I'm not. 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 I could be. I would be. And it's <laughs> and, fine. And there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Not that there would be. Uh, many Meanwhile, of my friends are, oh no. I'm in an Uber like five <laughs> minutes away already and they're like short circuit, like Blade Runner, like <laughs> seizing on the ground. <laughs> so remember kids, act fast. When you see crack right. at the landmark, yeah. go right up. Throw a slur. She there likes it. Yeah. Catch her attention. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. Like, oh, I haven't heard that one since junior high. <laughs> hey, it's John Cameron Mitchell on a beautiful spring day in New York. And I really love your show, Craig. I, I, but I really do need to know um, for my own peace of mind and perhaps yours, if you're gay, are you gay? I always like to know when, when someone's gay. I mean, I... Forget I asked this if it's uncomfortable for you, um, but it's an uncomfortable world, so you should be ready to be uncomfortable. I don't know how to use the internet very okay. well, which I think is a big part of helping me on my self-love journey. Okay, sure. Because I don't know how to access a lot of the social media sites that would help me spiral more. 
Caitlin, do you offer help to Cracker in terms of accessing the spiral materials? She or? helps me by uh, limiting my knowledge of how to access it. And I'll see her looking at a video of me where I'm like, where'd you get that? What's that? And she's like, don't worry about it. It's just a nice video of you. And I'm like, I'll like try to find it too. And I don't know how to do it. So she makes sure that I stay <laughs> ignorant. Well, that's good. Yeah. Look, keep a tight reign of control, yeah. right? It's like Colonel Tom Parker and Elvis. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, will you pass along the lovelier comments? Yeah. 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 She said yes. I just want to let everyone know. Yes. Yeah. She said yes. <laughs> she does pass on nice things. And actually, I think the best way she does it is by retweeting it. And then I see it and I'm like, oh, what's this? I do look like this dog. <laughs> <laughs> because I was going to ask, you know, about your relationship with your phone. Like, what is it? A lot of people are addicted to their Super phone. Super bad. Really? It's really bad. And I'm working on it. Um, but I think it's one of the biggest problems in my life. I installed a screen time app that like counts the number of hours and I'm really working on it. But um, you know how you were saying I didn't have a television yeah. relationship with my television growing up. Sure. And you also mentioned when you had that really touching video during Untucked that, that this is maybe the first time that your family used a computer. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So um, my sister would be more averse, but my mom would be like, what's going on? Um, so... The thing is, I had a flip phone, a sidekick. Oh, yeah. Until Classic. 2017. And uh, I told everyone, I was like, this, I need to have a, th this kind of phone, a sidekick, because it limits my access to things, and I feel like I'll get addicted to a screen. Yeah. And then uh, that broke, and I went to the Verizon, and that's all they had was a smartphone, and... I, when I got one, didn't have any of that long-term, like, screenality maturity that other people do. <laughs> so, I am pasted to it. Sure, yeah. And I don't care if I lose friends or family. That's the bad side. But the good side is, you can slowly feed me into a wood chipper like it's Fargo. <laughs> and if I have Wi-Fi, I don't care. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, People will be like, sorry, this is taking so long. I'm like, hmm? That's fine. Mm -hmm. And you could do the, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, thank you guys so much. You guys, this has been great. This has so been what have great. you been reading while we've been talking? Whatever. You, uh, <laughs> don't say reading. You're going to give the audience the bad idea. Oh, Just looking me. at pictures of myself. You're right. You're right. That's <laughs> like, all. Yeah. Caitlin, look at this one. Look yeah. at her. That's why you were gesturing with the phone. I see. Yeah. yeah. The sad yeah. thing is like when there's a video of me looking at a video of me and I'm looking at it, I'm like, look at me looking at this video of me. Look at it. <laughs> How many of those uh, do you have, Caitlin? Load it up. Tons? tons. Okay. There's yeah. lots of videos of me like seeing myself on a screen and being like, Caitlin. <laughs> look, look at this. This is great. There she this is. This is some great stuff. Have you yeah. seen this one? Oh, she looks great. Uh, it's like closed circuit television. I'm watching me. Oh, yeah. Watching me in real time. I'm like, I know even at like, you know, the pharmacy aisle, the supermarket where they seem to have the screen all the time. I love being like, oh, how's this? There she this is. This outfit's looking good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I look great from above. When I give head, it's a spectacular <laughs> view of my center part. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. My center parts. <laughs> that's your part of the trilogy coming out. Uh, actually, that's uh, Tatiana's new album. Oh, I see. I see. You know, I always like to have extensive notes for our guests. <laughs> Uh, and I appreciate that too. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I hate to look at my phone during an interview though. Cause oh, I like, that's fine. Yeah. I do like to maintain eye contact. It makes but... you... <laughs> well, I'll do that and you can have some more of your soda. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I can look at you while having my soda. Oh, okay. I like that. Does it feel comfortable? It quite comfortable. <laughs> more than comfortable. Um, oh, I, you know, this is the most important thing. There's one where someone was, I think Aquaria was talking about peeing clear. And then you said, you pee like red bull so i wanted to know where you're at on that journey because you're not drinking water now i know you're enjoying the coca -Cola. you know i have like the darkest urine <laughs> of any of my peer group look you know and you know what i'm not ashamed no you're, you're proud I'm not ashamed. it's yeah. good to be proud of your accomplishments it means i'm full of things <laughs> that's you know? right you're taking in a lot and you're giving a lot. Yeah, yeah when i start peeing clear i'll be like what i have nothing left to give <laughs> That's you know right. I mean? You got to keep something back. You can't give it all away. I have two of the hardest working kidneys <laughs> in show business. In show business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I have a terrible um, 
diet. Tell and me about the diet. It is like when I'm on tour, uh, Caitlin watched me eat two pizzas by myself. Two pizzas. Now, what toppings? Brie. You can get brie on pizza? I've never In had Chicago, that. In Chicago, you can. Oh, man. Yeah. It, like music swells break into musical number about brie in Chicago, <laughs> um, <laughs> which Rachel Bloom will write for me. Um, but uh, yeah, that's Or maybe that's right it. now. <laughs> Brie in Chicago on the pizza. <laughs> Can't wait to meet ya. Uh, <laughs> and cut. <laughs> well, I think we only have, uh, we only have the wrap. first few seconds of that track. I don't know, but will you release? Do the we rest have the of rights that? to that? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure. We'll put it out, and then I'll get a cease and desist. Hopefully. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank Please you. Please welcome Miss Susan Desist. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, a lot of fried chicken and pizza. Uh-huh. And that's pretty much exclusively what I've been eating for about a year. And then... Well, today I, oh I started my day. I had a late, little late start to the day, as you know. Yeah. Uh, with rock slider something. I, I, you know when you wake rock up and you're slider. like... Yeah. That yeah. sounds like a sexual position. Well, <laughs> well yeah, it's, sort of, it's my pseudonym for certain films. Right. Hey, I heard there was a problem. They sent me yes, rock slider. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I've been eating. And I, oh, in the last week, I have changed it to salads because I saw on TV one time that that's what you're supposed to do when you're ashamed. So you're having um, shame salads. Shame salad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What dressing do you like with a shame salad? <laughs> I like a dusting of uh, body shaming. It's like when you get a diced uh, hard boiled egg or something. On yeah, a salad. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Body shaming and then soul searching uh, <laughs> drizzled over it. But, oh, I thought uh, you said soul cycle. I didn't. I was like, wait, not hold on a second. Cycle. Yeah, not yet. Uh, but I started actually by ordering what Latrice orders because she actually or- orders like really wholesome like kale salads. Yeah. So whenever I'm on tour with her, I just say I just tell the runner like just give me whatever Latrice is having. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. And that works so, out nicely. I'm yeah. trying to stay to the Latrice diet. Mm-hmm. And now, yeah. in terms of beverages, what's your go-to alcoholic beverage? I don't drink. You know, and I forgot that. Unless pushed. Oh, unless forced but, to. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, there's a drag queen in New York City that will close your nostrils and pour a shot down your throat. Wow, who's that? I, I won't name her name. Oh, okay. All right. But your <laughs> no, friend like, knows them. Yeah, yeah my yeah, friend yeah. knows them. And uh, I think my friend is the only one that knows them. Uh, <laughs> it's nice no, to have secrets, you know? It's like, uh, no, her name is Tina Burner and she's hilarious. Mm-hmm. She's also really scary. She's like six foot 11. So that's that happens. But otherwise, I try not to drink because when you are being looked at by a whole bunch of eyes, if something goes wrong, you want to be able to blame yourself and not, uh, Patron! <laughs> right. As Banshee says. Yeah. yeah, and then also you don't want to open up the possibility for further anxiety by having a little incident that was inspired by Inspired Patron. by Patron. Lady Patron, yeah. yeah. Trademarked, patented by Patron. Now, do you enjoy yeah. weed or anything? I don't enjoy weed because, as I said, I'm a super anxious. Well, I'm the same way with weed. It and spins it's like, me right out. Like, Every once in a while, I can have a light hit off of someone's like very mild sativa pen. Yeah. I, if it I don't like, even know what sativa is. Oh, see, there you go. I thought she was on season four. <laughs> no, no, didn't make it. But auditioned, I think, for the first eight seasons. Yeah, and, uh, she was hilarious. She really was. High. She really yeah. was. I just think it was a lack of polish or something. Yeah, yeah. she was budding. She's a budding queen. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they're like, we'll keep her for next season. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. They're going to keep for her for a long time. <laughs> 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 so uh what was my thought yeah so i i can't i can't i'm just too anxious too yeah yeah and i actually majored in uh, uh in marijuana in college um, oh interesting yeah <laughs> so yeah i was like okay so since that didn't work out i'm gonna st- not do that anymore well, but you put the time in i did put the time in and i tried it and you don't knock it till you tried it uh-huh. and uh you you can't kick it till you tried it so. and don't try it till you knock it right? yeah exactly yeah. Uh, three times <laughs> and say its name in the mirror so yeah i can't anymore it's just like a product of being on tour all the time. Mm-hmm. Someone's looking at you at all times. Sure. They're yeah. going to slide that curtain aside and look at your face. So I try to be, I'm like, I'm like, this is a game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Seriously though, she enjoys a glass of wine every once in a while. Yeah. After she kills all of her enemies. Oh, exactly. Right. So you got to get business taken maybe care there will of. Maybe a time. Right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> my in my family it's like as long as there's ethanol in it is the standard <laughs> so like a lot of people my age i'm in my mid 30s and i'm not ashamed um are like very proud of the fact that they know a lot about wine and the different oh tannins yes and the and, et cetera. and the uh, yeah. yeah and i'm like don't try to elevate your habit don't or just talk amongst fellow 
wine enthusiasts in, yeah. in, in uh, air quotes. Yeah. Keep that stuff. Cause that's like people talking about certain types of drugs and how the pink one is better because yeah. this is, you know, oh no, this one has no come down. Maybe keep it to just right. fellow enthusiasts you guys, when you guys are ripped up. If you, if you are talking to someone about your passion yeah. and uh, a thin milky film <laughs> forms over their eyes, <laughs> Try a different subject. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Switch it up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All of us with deep passions know oh. you got to yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I have my passions. I have watched Caitlin slowly die several times. Well, I'm like, Caitlin, you know what the most common kind of tree is <laughs> in California? She's like, here we go. So you're a nature fan. I'm a huge nature fan. I have a uh, tree identification book that I try to travel with. It's only come on like two trips so far, but uh-huh. we're going to make it. A thing. Um, Maybe get a backup so there's always one on the road kit. Yeah, yeah. I, I should probably have a digital. <laughs> I should probably have a digital one. It's like the fucking Merc manual of trees. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you can learn a lot about a place by looking at what grows there. And yeah, what, Caitlin yeah. loves hearing all about. Oh those yeah, yeah. You can't get detail. enough. You're, you're just you're smiling and gesturing right now, like you yeah. just can't get enough. Yeah. What can you learn about uh, West Hollywood from the trees? You can learn about all the things that were imported here by whom. Oh, okay. Um, so California was a Spanish colony. And so you see the influence in the architecture and you see the influence in what uh, plants were brought over here yeah. and, and enjoyed as well. I look at the Budalia, which grows everywhere. That It's that like super hot fuchsia flower. And uh, I look at that and that's something that's really prevalent in California. And it just makes me think that there's a lot of pictures of my mother growing up in California. This mm-hmm. is where she grew up. And, uh, I'm just like, you have that sense of place. You're not going to see that flower anywhere else, but sure. here. And, uh, it's like when I see the plants that are growing around here, I'm like, Oh, I know where we are. We're in LA. You've got Mexican palm trees. You've got the California palm trees. They're yeah. distinct in their own different way. Do you take pictures yeah. of the different yes, trees? I do, right? and oh, I, I love send them this. To my mom. Oh, I love this. I <laughs> and love we'll be, this. I'll be like, well, now what kind of plant is this? No, so may I ask, so your mother still has sight? Yeah, she is like, it is very, 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 very hard. Sure. Um, And she's struggling with her sight more and more and more. Yeah. It's one of those situations where just like every single day that she has any sight at all, we're super grateful. Yeah. Um, But things will happen. Like we smuggled me into the house to surprise her for a visit and uh, she came around the corner into the room and just did not register me at all. So I'm like, we're all, I'm standing there with jazz hands and uh, (laughs) she didn't notice me. And then she turned around and saw that there was someone there. She's like, what is this person doing here? And uh, like, what are you doing to that guy? Cause my sister was like pointing that she's like, it's, it's cracker. Yeah. So yeah, there's that difficult stuff. Sure. Um, And that I think is like the foundation of life is that difficult stuff Uh that holds us on the ground. Our responsibility is to like make a life and happiness on top of it. Not ignoring that stuff, but acknowledging it and saying this is part of everything. Yeah, like so here's all these things that are holding me down on the ground on Earth and uh, they're part of life and being a living thing. And I'm going to make a really great show today. Yeah. What's the name of your show? It's called American Woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about feminism today um women's experience in america and beyond and it's sort of based on talking with women fans and friends about the kind of numbers they would like to see in a drag show so that they felt it was like including and welcoming them Mm -hmm. instead of just a gay bar drag show transplanted into you know a larger venue and to a larger venue yeah and it's also me thinking about what i can do and what everybody can do Mm -hmm. to just make daily life more welcoming and appreciative of women and their bodies. And uh, I make fun of myself a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, a, because I'm up there, a dude in a dress mansplaining, <laughs> you know, about feminism. Sure. And B, because I make a lot of mistakes mm-hmm. and I think everyone does. And I just learned to use that show as a place to be like, well, here's something I did that was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that I shouldn't have that I shouldn't have done that I thought I had a gay pass to do. I was like, oh, I can talk about my girlfriend's thick thighs because I'm gay and I'm like Jack and I could do whatever I want. <laughs> but then when she made fun of my weight gain, I realized that you know nobody can do that to anybody. Uh-huh. So yeah, it's just kind of like mapping that journey for me sure. and trying to have a really good time in the process. Yeah, so that everyone doesn't leave like crushed down. <laughs> 
No, you, that, you like to do that before the intermission to crush them down. Right. And bring them back and up. Bring them back up. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. The, so, the foundation of that is the suffering and injustice and iniquity that women face every day. Mm-hmm. And then the beauty of it is the show that comes out of it where we're looking for a way to try to change things. Yeah. Um, and me sort of doing what I said earlier, which is being super confused and being okay with that. Yeah. Because that, that confusion is closer to the answer. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to go back a little bit to your youth and I wanted to ask. Same. <laughs> just, I had a feeling. I had a feeling you just wanted to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To win like coming up out of a squat was like a thing and not an adventure. <laughs> you know? <laughs> not a challenge. Yeah. Just, just what you did. Yeah. All right, ladies, gather around for today's mini challenge. <laughs> you will do a knee bend. You have quite a good uh, impression of RuPaul yeah. letting people know oh. that who's going to go and who's going to stay. Yeah. Could you do it for us here? Monet exchange. <laughs> the, whole, the whole key, I always say, is to put out twice as much breath as you need for each word. <laughs> Earlier this week, I asked you to prepare a lip sync to Eureka O'Hara's Body Positivity. Your last chance to impress me... <laughs> And see yourself from elimination. Yeah, it's that breathiness. Now, what was what was the uh, scene like in Seattle when you first? (laughs) (laughs) What was the scene like? I I was not fully out by the time I left Seattle at seventeen. So okay, I had no idea. I went to my first gay bar like in Seattle like last year. Mm -hmm. I think it was called the Cuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess what? It looked like a gay bar anywhere else in the USA. Wow. See. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> i think there's an eagle i think there might be there yeah there might be the, yeah. I, they're starting to spread around is, right? do you know why there's an eagle in every i know i have no city? idea there's also clubs named avalon in every major oh. metropolitan city and i don't know absolutely like what is that the eagle yeah. and avalon eagle yeah. and the avalon yeah very regal very lord of the rings i'm into yeah, it true um but yeah so i didn't know capitol hill was quite so big until i was there working on a tour uh, oh. and i because i thought it was like harvard square in massachusetts kind of yeah. small so i was on the street where they had the original Starbucks or something. Yeah. And I thought that was it. And then the next day discovered that it was a gigantic, gigantic place. Oh, it's massive. Yeah. And it's topped by... <laughs> Is it? <laughs> this, ling- this language <laughs> problem, these Freudian slips. Did I, I didn't know that about Capitol Hill either. It's topped by mm-hmm. uh, by Amazon Enterprises. No, it, it's topped by um, Volunteer Park, which is this big, like, arboretum, beautiful, lovely gardens yeah. where people can fuck at night oh that's nice um and it's also where um my mother took us a a lot to go see the museum up there the asian art museum and that's where we would get our inspiration to make things so we would go up there for inspiration to like look at all these beautiful art pieces from around asia and i would see like gay dudes on roller skates making out and just my little brain was like seizing, didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. So yeah, it, was rece- it was receiving a signal somehow. Yeah. And, but you didn't know what it was oh, or how to just like, so do I want to be a skater? Wait, what? I think I'm really into like shorts. Um, so, and I still am all you boys out there. Uh, so yeah, it's a classic volunteer park. Capitol Hill was like a super formative place for me as an artist and as, um, a, just whatever was going on with me, yeah, whatever future that was. roller skater as a future roller skater. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. Yeah. Um, big fan of Xanadu, right? Yeah. Uh, Xanadu. <laughs> uh, what was high school like? Um, high school was great because I was like in the top tier drama class. Um, and I got to write plays and stuff like that. And oh, you wrote plays. Yeah. Drama kids are wrapped in this cellophane of delusion <laughs> and protected from so much. It's a beautiful cellophane. Yeah. Though. It was wonderful. It really, I had, yeah no bullying in high school i had that's yeah, great yeah um so i had a great time yeah yeah and uh it was college that was rough oh really yeah because where'd you go to college i mean i hesitate to use the word college i think the college is shutting down now because really? it's just that bad <laughs> it's like collapsing in on itself yeah um, they're taking away the certifications oh 100 percent, all the way yeah it is a fiery mess and uh at the Evergreen State College um, in Washington. Uh-huh. And that's where they don't give you grades. They give you an evaluation, a little essay about how you did. Really? And it's supposed to be like two pages long in my first semester. Where you were majoring in marijuana. Where I was majoring in uh, marijuana. Uh, the, my evaluation was two sentences long. It was, 
Max shows up for class when he feels like it and participates only in the things that interest him. <laughs> and I was like, fair. Yeah. Fair. Very. Uh, Brevity is the soul of yes, wit. Yeah, exactly. You captured it. Yeah. Concise, you captured it. Perfect, perfect. I almost forgot to come to this evaluation meeting. I'll take that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so they got you in a way. Yeah. yeah. So like, I think that college was sort of when I explored the least that I can be as a human being. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just didn't like it. So then I sort of was like, okay, what's the most that I can be after that? Yeah. And so I went there. And then after Evergreen is when you went to New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. I went to New York. I was going to be, I saw the hours with Meryl Streep where she was walking down the street in the snow with some publishing papers and she was an editor. I was like, yeah. oh, say Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> and then a year later, I was working at a publishing house, walking down the street with papers. I was like, okay, next, you know, thank you. Yes, next. Right. Um, We've talked a lot about movies. So once you started getting into movies, it that's seems where I like learned you about went, the world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are a handful of, if not favorites, oh, formative films besides Magnolia, besides The Magnolia, Hours? Magnolia, The Hours. Um, uh, oh, I haven't seen that one. The Tree of Life. Um, really into that. I'm also super into the Fifth Element. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, which is just like Jean Paul Gaultier, certainly designed and um, Chris the Tucker's song. role is and great. Yes, yes, and uh, he's straight and femme. Uh, he's a boundary breaker. Uh, so yeah, things like, like it runs the gamut. But I, I, I remember thinking the other day when people ask you what's one of your favorite films, say which this is by the one. way a difficult question that I'm trying yeah. to get around saying favorite. I just like so, a lot of things. Like I like the Shipping News. I like Dogville. Uh huh. Anything with Nicole Kidman. Anything with Meryl Streep. And Julianne Moore and her tiny hands. Julianne Moore and her teeny tiny hands. Safe. Oh, uh, okay. With Julianne Moore, yeah, um, yeah. Far from Heaven. Uh huh. Yeah. Regrettably, I haven't seen that yet. I have to oh, see it's great. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's camp. Uh huh. That's right. Certainly, yeah. Yeah. I know that it's inspired a lot by the films of Douglas Sirk. Sure. Yeah, and that the I won't argue with the you. visual look. <laughs> I could be making things up. Yeah. But I like that you go along with yeah. that. I appreciate uh, that. You are the hostess after all. <laughs> You're on tour. Yes. Yes. Constantly. <laughs> when is uh, <laughs> when is your one woman show playing next? <laughs> Have you seen the others? With Nicole Kidman? No, I haven't. <laughs> There's this part where uh, her husband like comes out of the fog from war to like visit yeah. her and the war is over. Um, and then he's like wandering out of the house again to go out, even though the war is over, he's back. He's like, she's like, where are you going? He's like, I have to go back to the front. <laughs> and she's like, what the hell is going on? And he's yeah. just like PTSD the hell yeah. out. Um, that's the kind of tour I'm on. I like the tour you. is over, but the tour is never the over. The tour is never over. And so what was never, the question ever. about tour? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was going to say that uh, you've taken to it quite nicely and uh, it seems to have no lasting effects on you. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I'm like centered. I like <laughs> Really zen. You've been radiating that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just radiating. It's like just like this maternal glow. Mm-hmm. So what do you do for fun? It's because a lot of people just like sort of have a drink. Oh, I'm so glad that you asked that because I just <laughs> thought of an answer to this question. Oh, good. Uh, let's see what i do for fun is i write Mm -hmm. um in my journal um as oscar wilde says one should always have something sensational to read on the train so i bring my diary um and then i read Mm -hmm. when i can i've been working on this book sapiens for about a year now we're celebrating a year congratulations Um, thank you Mm -hmm. uh wear and tear and all that and a broken (laughs) spine but um in any gay relationship um (laughs) so uh yeah, those are the things that I can do. And then, like, the thing that I have always done for fun for the last eight years has been drag. So, my job is... Is your fun. Is my fun. That's really the goal. Too. Yeah. Yeah. The work part of it is answering emails and filling out forms for the TSA. Oh, that's, sure. That's the work part. But the rest yeah. is play. Mm-hmm. I play for a living. How do you feel about meet and greets? Some people have mixed feelings about them. I like it when I'm the star <laughs> of the meet and greet, when it's like when they're coming to meet me. And it's not just about uh, me getting all the attention. It's about uh, them getting attention too. Yeah. Because if there's like 50 people, 50 Rue girls, like all sitting on various size stools, yeah. like nobody really gets any attention. It's too you just sort fragmented. Of, yeah. Yeah. So you're like, like, hello, you look them in the eyes and you connect for a minute. They get to tell you something and you get to thank them. And yeah. that's a real uh, exchange. And part of what I love about drag is that like eye contact and yeah. the, the reality of it. And you're good at eye contact. Yeah. So. She loves it. Mm. You know, I've had to focus because my eyes look in different directions. So <laughs> it's good for me and for you. Um, so do you wear corrective lenses? No. 
no mm-hmm. i hate being corrected <laughs> um you'll do your own thing and so we realize yeah, yeah exactly in all different directions like i said you know it falls from my eyes too you know confusion <laughs> 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 State. Can, yeah get but i love them, i love yeah. being greece i do yeah and i i really look up to some of the things that bianca del rio does and she's a very successful lady who earns a lot of money and has a lot of attention and yeah. huge but she um has great meet and greets where everyone walks away feeling like she took time yeah with them and i've done a couple shows with her where there's like a, a bunch of rude girls like in dressing rooms and she takes five to ten minutes with every single girl and so anyone that or anytime i'm tempted to say oh well i'm so busy i just don't like if bianca has time yeah you have time. That's a very good point because yeah. her schedule is always breathtaking. When oh. you see a new post about the new tour and then now I'm going to be in this other show as well as doing my tour and yeah, uh, TV exactly. Thing. Yeah, exactly. It's like pulling those like little monkeys out of the barrel. Like there's <laughs> one tour holding on to another and it never stops. So when is American Woman playing next in L.A.? Um, well, we haven't set our American tour yet. We set our uh, Australian and New Zealand tour, which is in May slash June. And then the U.K. tour yeah um which is right now just the london palladium oh just that you're place welcome yeah just that little uh that little it's right around the corner from the starbucks do you know that one? Oh, see, that's that, what i know yeah i know the star everyone knows the, the starbucks, starbucks where ella fitzgerald the who <laughs> judy garland used to go <laughs> oh keith moon loved that starbucks oh he loved oh, it darling the, the frappes the lattes but after the logo changed she left um yeah, well look you gotta have your standards uh, right it, absolutely it's just, that's what they tell me um <laughs> so yeah we've we've set those things but the american tour uh well you know americans like waiting so there we're, go. we're gonna announce in the next couple of weeks what we're doing with that good well i'm looking forward um, to it but yeah we want to do we want to do la we want to do chicago uh, we want to do new york again do you want to snub any cities uh yes the following cities can expect me to skip them no uh we want to like hit as many dots as we can sure um because like i just said about eye contact i like to be able to look at everyone yeah i think that's something that drag has to offer that the screens television the black mirrors yeah don't offer mm-hmm. so i want to go do that and like s- sweat on people yeah it's nice sweater. to sweat on people yeah, yeah. it's a good time yeah uh, um oh, pardon me that's okay a delivery it means you're probably what is it i think it's amazon prime now yeah which is oh, that's be great fun. Wait, what's Amazon Prime now? Oh, it's great. You can order various things, sometimes groceries, sometimes just like garbage bags, etc. And you can set a two hour delivery window. So sometimes you can get it in the next like hour, hour, two, yeah. three hours. And so I ordered that probably about four. And so it's garbage bags, water, iced tea, uh, toothpaste, you know, the, yeah. the stuff, shaving cream, which I just ran out of, you know, that sort of stuff. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So they'll just drop it off. And I do a lot of Amazon Priming. Do you as well? Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> the addiction uh-huh. and uh just uh bloviating here off the top of my head that's what we like it's a podcast we need that a great service that i think amazon could offer is amazon help now um <laughs> for social situations at home or oh, out yeah you can like order on your phone mm-hmm. someone to come by with an urgent matter that you have to attend to so you can get out of that horrible oh, i have a call oh well no, see, you're popular too. Uh, there so you go. Like, uh, uh, yeah, that's perfect just like for them to come by and be like hey uh are you not gonna be did At the you, thing, it's in yeah. 30 minutes yeah. ago. And you're like, oh my, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I have to go. Listen, I'd love, I'd I, love to I, stay in okay, chat. Okay, listen, but like, uh, just text me. You have my number. We have, our, we have numbers. Yeah, okay, right, just okay, okay, great. Yeah, Facebook yeah. Messenger, we all do it. So I'll see you. Like, that's what I want from Amazon. L- listen, there's a lot now. of actors who could use a little side gig. And they show up and they can show the pleading. We have to come on. Please hurry. Please hurry. Oh, absolutely. Done. Yeah. Yeah. And in honor of the recent x-files episodes just a light smattering of blood if you have a little bit of blood and some urgency yeah you get anyone out of anything right. and yeah. a little bit of blood and some urgency is actually trixia's uh new <laughs> show that's going yeah she's workshopping it in pizza yeah. this summer we're yeah. all looking it's forward gonna, to it there's some rough spots hey, well but, you yeah, know yeah yeah that's, it takes that's after like... her <laughs> yeah so yeah no, that's, that's that's my idea and that's for free uh jeff bezos Oh, well, that's, so, that's, that's very, his name, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah J yeah. Bezos. Yeah. J-Bay. I know the first initial. Yeah. J Bay. J Bay. Yeah. Love his stuff. As yeah. N- nobody likes to call him. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. As the unpopular nickname mm-hmm. yeah. goes. Well, I've had such a wonderful time with you. I had Cracker. a good time with you, too. Oh, good. And we've covered a lot of 
ground. We certainly did. Yeah, I never thought I would talk about such diverse topics. Really? Uh, except, you know, when I'm with Caitlin and we're trying to figure out the meaning of the universe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the cab. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. and then you go back to the trees. Right. Yeah, it all yeah. goes back to that. Well, do you have a favorite tree? I do have a favorite tree. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the ginkgo tree. Uh-huh. Um, it is 365 million years old. It oh, hasn't wow. changed in that amount of time. And it is the only tree that when the winter comes, drops all of its leaves at once. It's like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm done. Other trees yeah. are like, I think it's getting cold. It's time to start letting go. Ginkgo's are like, boom. All like, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Bruce Almighty. Just fully okay. out of their clothes. Yeah. And uh, they are planted in cities because they purify air so rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, and there's male and female trees. They're gendered. Uh, and the what I like about them is that they haven't changed in that long because they got it right to start with. So no modifications needed. Yeah. They're, they grew up in primal earth and they're surviving in modern cities. Mm -hmm. You know, stay true to yourself. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yes, that's right. Sometimes wearing the same silhouette for every runway can work for you. That's right. Um, but we've talked enough about Bianca, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's my favorite treat. Thank you for asking. Oh, I'm happy to know. I'm glad that what's your favorite film, like, sh shook me to the core. But what's your favorite treat? Bam. You had it right there. I'm ready. Maybe that's yeah. the question I should ask everyone then. Yeah. The answers won't be as good as yours, of course. So, yeah. right. But you know, Barbara Walters used to ask people, if you were a tree, if what kind of tree? tree? What yeah. kind of tree <laughs> would you be? Would you be the ginkgo or would you be another one? Because, you know, your favorite tree might not be the one that the you one would that be. The one you want to be. Yeah. You, you, it's hard to tell with trees. Do you like want to be it or do you want to be with it? Do you yeah, know what no, I mean? Right, exactly. Right. I admire it so much, but really, hmm. I would be a madrona tree because they shed their bark in parchment scrolls. Oh, that's and very. And it's gorgeous. Yeah. And like, a same because I'm a writer, so. <laughs> so it fits, you we know. We have that. And they're both native to Washington. Oh, okay. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, Caitlin. See, look, there's the milky film oh, on her eyes. She was, <laughs> not just that, she was shrugging. She's like, the... 905, she passed. Thank you so much, Craig, and I'm glad that I could frighten you out into the open <laughs> on yeah, whatever issues very I special, did. Uh, very yeah. special episode Looked today. right, and I, my goal is to become the Barbara Walters of drag, so... Well, you know, you know you're on your way. Here beginneth the Be tale. Indeed. Well, until next time. Thank you, baby.